What's up guys, my name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and in my previous video I covered downloading, installing, setting up and adding a plugin to your first Minecraft 1.15 bucket server. This video however is about Spigot. They're both basically the same thing but they are slightly different. There's a different place to download plugins and hence there's a different video explaining everything that you need to know if you want to host your own server. This video will take you from a complete beginner without a server to setting up your own server on your own computer, port forwarding, allowing friends to join and adding plugins. So to begin, let's go across to the first link in the description down below, which is download Spigot. At the very top, look for version 1.15 and hit the download button next to it. It'll then download a .jar, but if it doesn't automatically start, simply hit this button over here, spigot115.jar, and you'll see it downloading over here. While it downloads, I'll be making a new folder on my desktop and I'll call it spigot 1.15. Of course, you can put this anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Then the download finished. It says it might be harmful, but all you need to do is just hit keep. Then I'll drag and drop it out of Chrome into this folder. From here, you need to make sure that you can see spigot with a dot jar at the very end of it. If you don't see dot jar at the very top, go to view and make sure file name extensions is checked. Once you've done that, you can either leave the name as is, just remember it, or you can change it to be just spigot or anything really. I'm gonna make it spigot.jar. Then to start our server, I'll make a new file. Right click, new text document, and I'll name it start, getting rid of .txt, .bat. So start .bat with no .txt at the end. Hit enter and it'll ask if you're sure that you want to rename it. Hit yes and the icon should change. Then right click, edit. And now we're editing start.bat. Inside of here, you need to look down in the description below and copy paste this line in. Java, XMX, XMS, jar, spigot, no GUI. Now, of course, here is the dot jar that I mentioned earlier. As mine is called spigot.jar, I'll keep it as spigot.jar in here. Of course, if it's named something different in the folder, you need to change this over here to match that one. Then I'll go to the very end, press enter and on a new line I'll type in pause and then we can go and figure out how much RAM we want to give the server. So obviously the more RAM you give the server the more players can join and the better the performance will be. To find out how much RAM you have right click on your start bar and go to task manager. Then go to the performance tab and click memory. In the top right you'll see how much RAM you have in total and down over here you'll see available RAM. I have 46.8 gigs available, but of course you'll probably have much less. Of course you need some RAM left over for your actual game itself and for the rest of Windows, so don't give it everything. Say you have 8 available, you can give the server 4. That leaves more than enough for your game to run and any other programs you want to open. So don't give it everything. Over here, 2048M means 2 gigabytes. So if you'd like one gigabyte, you'd set it to 1024. And if you'd like anything like eight, you'd simply multiply 1024 by eight or six or however many gigabytes you want to give it. Say you want to give it four gigabytes of RAM, you'd make it 4096. But because that's a bit of a difficult number to work with, you can simply get rid of all of the numbers and the capital M and simply type in four capital G. This means that we're giving the server a maximum, XMX means maximum, amount of RAM of four gigs. You can simply ignore XMS next to it because that's the starting amount of RAM on the server. It's currently set to two gigabytes. Of course, if you're gonna give the server less than two gigs, you'll need to change this to say 1024 or however much. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna give it four gigabytes of RAM and a starting of two. Hit Control S to save and you can close out of the dot .bat. Then simply run it. You'll see a window pops up, says loading libraries, and then fail to load, etc, etc. Press any key to continue, and you should see a bunch of new files over here. If you don't, then make sure that you have Java installed and up to date. Head across to the second link in the description down below, hit accept license agreement, and then download either Windows x86 offline if you're on 32-bit or Windows x64 if you're on 64-bit Windows. After downloading and installing Java, if you haven't got it already, run start.bat again. And if it creates these files, great. If it doesn't, then check the description down below for a link to a video on fixing that. So say that you have all of these files here, all you need to do is double click on eula.txt and at the very end where it says eula equals false, change that false to be true. Save it and close it. Now before starting our server, let's open server.properties and change some things about our server. So looking down, we can change the difficulty from easy to something like hard. We can enable command blocks, enable hardcore, disable PVP, etc, etc. 
by simply changing true to false or false to true. You can disable the spawning of monsters and things like that and change the maximum amount of players that can join the server. Usually you'll leave it at 20 unless you want more to join or fewer to join. Down here you have server hyphen port and I'd recommend leaving this at 25565 unless you have more than one Minecraft server running on the same local network or just your computer. Scrolling down to the very bottom we have MOTD over here which I'll be changing from a Minecraft server to troubleshoot spigot 1.15. This is what will appear right under the server's name when people add it to their Minecraft games. And that's it, we're basically done in server.properties. I'll close it and double click on start.bat. This will start up the server and generate a bunch of new files. Once this is done loading completely, you can simply join the server. You can see we have World, World Nether, World The End, which are all of the save games, plugins, which is where we put our plugins, logs, and a bunch of extra files that we won't be looking into today. So I'll drag it across to the side and start up Minecraft. You don't need anything special, you just need Minecraft 1.15 selected and hit play. Then the game will start up. We'll go into multiplayer, add a server, you can name it whatever you want. And if you're joining on the same computer that you have the server running on, you can join using either local host or 127.0.0.1. This will join you directly to your own server over here. If I add it, you can see Troubleshoot Spigot, 0 out of 20, and you can join it. Now, of course, if you'd like your friends to join, there's a couple of extra steps that we have to follow. So I'll disconnect and edit so I can show you what to do. So if you'd like another computer on the same local network or router to join, then all you need to do is hold Start, press R, type in CMD, and hit Enter. Then I'll be typing in IP config, enter yet again, and I'll be looking for how I'm connected to the internet. So because I'm using a cable, I'll look for ethernet adapter. Then look for IPv4 address, and look for the number next to it. Mine's 192.168.1.20. So I'm going to remember that. And if I was going to let someone on the same network join, they'd type in 192.168.1.20 and then hit done and join. However, if you want a friend that's outside of your home network to join, all you need to do is head back to your browser, go to Google and type in what is my IP. Now, if you don't have this block over here with your IP up here, then you just need to head into one of these links down below and look for your IP in there. Once you copy it, then you'll be able to send it to your friends for them to join. Now, of course, before any of your other friends join, you need to make sure that two things are done. Your firewall is open and you've got Minecraft port forwarded to your computer. So let's begin with the firewall. Let's begin by pressing start, typing in firewall and opening Windows Defender firewall. Then advanced settings on the very far left and we'll be heading to inbound rules in the top left. Then on the top right, we'll click new rule, click on port, next, TCP, and we'll enter the port of the server. Because we left it as default, which is 25565, that's what I'll type in there. I'll select everything, and copy it because we'll be typing in this number quite a bit. Next, allow, next, next, and I'll name it MC. Finish. New rule once again, port, next, UDP, paste in the port again, next, allow, next, next, MC, finish. Now, of course, you can name it whatever you want, but I'm just keeping it as MC to keep this tutorial speedy. In the top left, go to outbound rules, and then new rule once again, port, next, paste in the port again, TCP, next, allow, next, next, MC, finish. New rule, port, next, UDP, paste in the port, next, allow, next, next, MC, finish. Now we're done allowing it through our Windows firewall. Of course, if you have an antivirus or firewall software, you'll need to allow it through there as well. At this point, someone on your local network can join your Minecraft server. However, your friends over the internet cannot. In order to allow them to join, we need to open the port and port forward it. To do that, it's a little bit more difficult because no router is really the same because there are a ton of different kinds of routers and I won't be able to cover it for everything. However, I have created this basic example over here of what your router might look like. Obviously, you'll need to log in and use your own. You'll find something like external port, internal port, something asking for a protocol, and your local IP. Inside of external port, I'll be entering 25565, or whatever your server port is. And if it's asking you for two of them, simply enter it in the second one. So 25565, 
2565. Internal port is the same. I'll put the same in both of them. And under protocol, change it to a TCP and UDP if you have this option. Otherwise, add one as TCP and do the same for the next one as UDP. But because I have both of them in one option, I'll choose that one. Then local IP, you may be asked to type in the whole thing or just the last section to it because the first half is typed out here for me, 192.168.1. All I need to do is enter 20, which was what we had earlier inside of CMD. Hit add new. And from this point, you've now port forwarded. If you were to send your external IP to someone, they'll be able to add it to their Minecraft like this, hit done, and they'll be able to join the server as usual. From this point, you've now successfully port forwarded, allowed the server through your firewall and got it working. However, the Spigot server is a bit bland. The whole point of having Spigot is adding plugins. So, first of all, before we get to that, if you want to run commands, head into Spigot, and I'll simply opt myself by typing in op space tcno, enter, and I've made my techno account operator. I can type slash game mode creative, and I can fly. So that means that we're successfully opt, and we can go ahead and run commands. So from this point, you might want to add Spigot plugins. To do that, head across to the description down below and look for a link that takes you to this page. As far as I know, you can use this page in the description down below to add the plugins to your server, but not every plugin is listed here. These are just Spigot specific ones. There's not a huge amount of them here. If you were to search for something like World Edit, you'll find a bunch of different ones and you may not know which one to pick. So you can also use the Bucket page, which is also linked down below. All you need to do is pick a plugin click on it, click it download in the top right, and you'll download a .jar. Simply hit keep when asked if you want to keep it. Then, heading back into our Spigot folder, I'll go into plugins, and I'll drag and drop it out into this folder. Now, of course, you may be tempted to simply hit the X to close your server. However, if you make any progress and you hit the X, the server will close and it will roll back all of that progress. What you need to do first is save. So, looking in the console for the server, all we need to do is type in save hyphen all and hit enter. Now we've successfully saved the server and you can see in game it says save the game. Then to stop the server, all we need to do is type in stop and hit enter. The server will close and press any key to continue. Heading back to our plugins folder, I'll go back one folder and we're over here again. I'll simply run start.bat and this time when the server starts, you'll see a few different things pop up. One of them being world edit, which we just added. So waiting for the server to start up completely, I'll tab back into Minecraft, back to server lists, and I'll rejoin. Now that we're back, and I'm still in game mode C, I still have op. All I need to do, type in any command for the plugin that we just added. I did slash slash wand, so I'll click one spot. I'll click, say, another spot. And I can type in a command like slash slash set, glowstone, hit enter. And the command was successfully run. Now, of course, this is just one plugin. However, this is purely just an example to show you that it works properly. We've successfully created, port forwarded, and allowed friends to join a Spigot server that we're hosting on our own computers. If there's anything extra I need to add to this tutorial, it'll be linked down in the comments and the description down below. However, that's about it for this video. I hope this video helps you in some way or another. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.